glad to have you with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan Mozak. I'm here with financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin, and we have a great program lined up for you today. And throughout the show, we'll be telling you how to register for the Foundation's Retirement Education courses. These are deep dives into all things retirement. If you're thinking about retiring soon, maybe this is the year you want to attend these courses. We make it easy, and we'll tell you how to do it throughout the program today. So Kirk, Michael, we want to talk about Roth conversions. This is something we hear about all the time. I know our listeners do as well. And today we want to tackle if, when, and how to do a Roth conversion. But Michael, I want to start here at the very beginning. Let's go back to what is a Roth IRA? Sure. Just so to cover the basics here. So a Roth IRA is simply an account type, similar to a, tr a traditional IRA, a traditional 401k, a Roth 401k. It's an account type. With a Roth IRA, the way that you fund it is with after-tax dollars. You pay taxes on income, you put it in the Roth IRA, the account grows tax-free, and as long as you follow the rules, you can pull the money out down the road in retirement tax-free. Now, the reason it's different than a traditional IRA, with a traditional IRA, you put the money in, you get a tax break up front, and then down the road, you pay taxes on the income. So with the Roth, you wanna think of it as you're paying taxes on the seed, and getting the harvest tax-free. With the IRA, you're getting the seed tax-free and paying taxes on the harvest. And in terms of choosing between traditional IRA, Roth IRA, it's all a tax question. And it's not about taxes just today, but projecting taxes out down the road in the future as well. So Michael, you know, it, we recognize the majority of the people listening to our shows, we, we've been on, on this air for quite a long time. And so we know that most of you guys listening understand what a Roth is how a Roth works. We don't want to talk too much about the basics because we believe most of you already understand the basics. I think the confusion is coming in because it has become very trendy and popular by the financial service industry trying to promote this idea of let's Roth convert, um, taxes are going up, and just fill brackets. They come up with these general one-size-fits-all rules, and I think it's getting a lot of people in trouble. To be clear, in our classes, in our private practice, I, we probably had over 300 people last year doing Roth conversions. It is a massive part of our class to utilize the strategy of Roth conversion, converting and Roth contributing. We don't debate the strategy is phenomenally effective and can help you uh, reduce the amount of taxes you're going to pay over your lifetime. The challenge, the work comes in by identifying when, if, and how. Like, like Megan mentioned, the when, if, and how. And it really is a question not about the next couple of years or the next five years. It's really about the next 30 years. And that's what we teach in the classes, the ha how to understand and estimate how, many, how much taxes you're going to pay over the next 30 years so that you can find the most effective path to minimize those taxes. That's how you identify when and how and if you should be Roth converting. The challenge that a lot of people have is without mapping this out for the next 30 years, it is almost impossible to determine when, if, how to Roth convert. And so without mapping it out, people defer to these rules of thumb, fill brackets, Roth convert the entire IRA, don't do any Roth conversions. Those simple rules of thumb often lead people into more trouble than it's even worth, and they could pay more taxes than they should have in the first place. You've got to map this out to identify the sweet spots and when to Roth convert, how to Roth convert, and why to Roth convert. I promise you, Michael, most people who are doing Roth contributions and conversions are doing them wrong. Not wrong in terms of they're going to pay penalties. I mean, they are causing themselves more tax harm than good because they haven't mapped it all out. They don't understand the consequences and where the sweet spots are and the timing. They're using simple rules. A lot of advisors are saying fill brackets. That is not the way you do this. To do this requires a tremendous amount of work and knowledge. And that's what we teach in the class. It's one of the reasons the class is eight hours in length. It's why we teach it over two evenings or one full Saturday. It's why these are taught, these are master's levels courses taught at most of the major universities here in Michigan. To attend, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. You can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. 
So I think we should talk about in the next segment in terms of conversions versus contributions. That's a pretty common misconception and yeah, people mix it up a lot. And what makes for a, the better outcome between conversions and contributions and really dive into what are some of the characteristics in terms of what to be looking for, for when to decide if, when, and how to Roth convert. There are a couple of key things that will help get people started to at least put them on the path to avoid making a lot of the common mistakes that we see. Yeah, I think today will be a really – stick around for this show because I, I, we're going to – you know, it's, what leads people to our classes often is – the hundreds of thousands of dollars that we tell people they can save if they map out their income properly throughout retirement and make some good decisions as they're approaching retirement. I know that tax dollar is what drives people to the class, right? And I get it because we do. We'll, we'll teach you how to save hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes throughout retirement. This is a master's levels course. This is really advanced. We have CPAs, attorneys, executives, uh, CEOs, CFOs for Fortune 500 companies, a ton of engineers. Yes, all you do it yourselfers that listen to us regularly. I don't know what you've been waiting for. You need to attend the class. This is a master's level class. Now, in the show today, we're going to give you some outlines on how and if and when you should be making these decisions. But we're still going to be limited. We can't teach you the math to figure out provisional income, RMDs, projecting forward, but we can give you some guidelines and hopefully the goal is to motivate you to attend one of our eight-hour classes. There's no excuses. We're teaching these classes now at the University of Michigan. We're teaching them at Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campus. We're teaching them at Oakland University. We're teaching at the University of Missouri. We're now going around the country starting to teach these courses at different universities around the country. This is a charity, Michael, that promotes advanced retirement planning strategies. This is not cookie cutter. This is for that $1 to $20 million client. I'm sorry, that $1 to $20 million uh, family who is looking for advanced strategies, not a cookie cutter, not eMoney Guide or Money Guide Pro, these simplified planning softwares, something more family office-like, mapping it all out for 30 years. So register for one of these eight-hour classes. If you'd like to register, all you have to do is make a $29 donation. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That is retirementplanningedu.org. There's plenty left with Kirk and Michael here on the program. Stay with us. Happy you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak here, back with Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They're both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. We've been telling you how to get registered for the courses that are sponsored by the foundation. These are really master's levels courses on retirement, retirement planning. We want you to attend. We want you in the front row. And keep in mind, these courses are taught around the community at major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, also at Michigan State University, both the Novi and the Troy campus, or Oakland University. And these are also taught virtually. They're live streamed, so you can watch from your home if you'd prefer. You can register two ways, either online or by calling. The phone number is 800-240-8981. The website is retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. So we want you to reach out now and reserve your space because spots do fill up quickly. And we're going to get back to the program. I want to mention something about this show. You can also listen to this program via podcast. That's right. Wherever you go to get your podcast, just search for the Retirement Education Hour, and you'll be able to download this program and several others. All right. So Kirk, Michael, I want to dive back into Roth conversions. What are the two ways that you can put money into a Roth? I think this is where some people get confused. There are two ways that we can get money into a Roth account. The most conventional way that people are familiar with is just a Roth contribution. 
where I earn income and I can contribute to a Roth every year through my Roth IRA or through a Roth 401k. Now, with Roth contributions, Michael, we have limits. We have income limits, at which point we get phased out and cannot put money into the Roth accounts. The Roth IRA. The Roth IRA accounts. No income limits with the Roth 401k, which is one of the advantages. Now, the way the, the, the area we spend a lot of time talking about in our courses, and we're going to spend a lot of time talking about t- today, is Roth conversions. This is whether I have earned income or not. At any point in my life, it doesn't matter my age. It doesn't matter if I make money or don't make money. I have the ability to Roth convert as much or as little as I want without any penalties or limitations or restrictions. Michael, I can never predict what the government will do because sometimes they don't always use common sense and make the smartest decisions. We'll all agree to that. But I think it's going to be very, very unlikely that they'll ever stop allowing Roth conversions. Michael, why would they never stop? Because I hear this occasionally. People are worried they might take this Roth conversions away from us. It's never going to happen. Why is that, Michael? So Congress loves Roth conversions, contributions and conversions, because they get the tax dollars now. People pay taxes now on the seed. They get tax-free income in the future, but Congress is thinking about the now and here, and they want the tax dollars now. One other way people can get money to a Roth that we'll touch on very quickly here Backdoor Roth conversions. Yeah, don't want to jump into. I intentionally ignored that. Don't want to jump into the weeds because nine out of ten people, or maybe ninety nine out of hundred people, are doing it improperly and are most likely committing tax fraud on accident. <laughs> yes. And the IRS might kill that down the road because they can't track it. It's a whole different thing. Now that's the one thing, Michael. I think that will likely go away. I think they're going to need to eliminate this backdoor Roth. And I'm not saying they should or shouldn't. I'm not making an opinion on if it's good or bad, but I know that they are – these are very complicated, and most people are screwing it up. Most people listening who are doing it right now are probably convinced they're doing it right, but most of them are not. And and it's very difficult for the IRS to track. So to catch them, it's through an audit and – And then there's a lot of confusion around it. So I think they'll get rid of that, but never, ever get rid of the Roth contributions and conversions. And that is when when people see the headlines of Congress is considering getting rid of Roth conversions. It's about backdoor Roth conversions, but the media intentionally excludes the words backdoor from the headline to cause more fear, panic, clicks. But no, Congress loves regular Roth contributions and regular Roth conversions. For sure. So- Michael, I think one of the confusion is, should I be contributing to a Roth right now? Should I be contributing? Should I be contributing in if my employer, by the way, you all, everyone should ask and find out if your employer offers a Roth provision in your 401k. It's pretty common. Most do now. It's the most effective way. If you're going to put money into a Roth account while you are working, that allows you to get the highest limits, the, the, the highest amount into the Roth without any limit limitations in terms of earned income. So a great tool, it can be a great strategy for the right person. And I'm going to make a, a general comment and we're going to dig in this, this topic. You, you just want to go right into it, don't you? You just want to get into the heart of it, but I think we'll lose people. But one of the decisions, probably the main decision on whether I should be contributing or converting is what is my effective tax rate today versus what my effective tax rate will be in my 60s, my 70s, and 80s, right? So, in other words, not marginal tax rates. And again, something we teach in the class is teach you how to better understand the difference between marginal tax rates and effective tax rates. Because to really make a decision on whether I should be putting money in my Roth now or converting right now, you really need to understand your effective rates and what those effective rates really are going to look like in your 70s and 80s primarily, Michael. And that's the challenge with that is, one, without building a plan first, how does someone know what kind of income they're going to have, how much income they're going to have, when they're going to retire? And the second caveat there is no one knows what's going to happen to tax laws down the road, but chances are taxes are not going to get cheaper. That's not a controversial opinion. It's not a left or a right thing. We spent trillions of dollars to keep the economy alive during covid Taxes are probably at some point going to have to go up in the future. Uh, They're going up. Taxes are on sale. I mean, you know, everyone's using that expression today. 
very common. Tax are on sale. They're going to they're, they're supposed to sunset at the end of 2025. So every one of us, unless Congress can agree on what to do with tax law, which they're not going to, it's unlikely the the old the law is going to sunset. But despite that, that still doesn't mean that it's a one size fits all. Oh, taxes are on sale. I should put money in the Roth. That's not the case. It's, it's there's no one size fits all for this question. So let's come back into uh, Michael. Sort of some of the decision making. And even some of the general rules, and maybe we start there, where the general rules people are talking about and why it gets them in trouble. Even the CPAs are giving people short-term bad advice because they're not doing long-term planning. If you want long ter- to understand long-term planning, if you want to know how to build a plan and understand what your tax are going to look like and map out your income for 30 years, you have to attend an eight-hour course, an advanced retirement planning course taught at all the major universities. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and you can attend this course by going to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be right back with Kirk and Michael right after this. Happy you've joined us for the Retirement Education Hour here with financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. We want to make sure that you're registered for the foundation's upcoming courses on retirement planning. These are their master's level courses. So these are several hours, either a one day course or over the course of two days. It's your choice. You can find out more at the website and get registered. Go to retirementplanning.edu. Dot org. You can also call 800-240-8981 to get registered. And these courses are taught at major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campuses, and Oakland University. If you'd rather watch from home, you can do that as well. These are streamed live. So it's your choice how you want to attend. So we urge you, go to the website now, get registered, retirementplanningedu.org. The program today is all about Roth conversions. If you should do that, when you should do it, and how to do it. We're going to get back to that in just a minute. want to remind you, you can find this episode and plenty others by going to wherever you find your podcast. That's right. It's offered via podcast. Just search for Retirement Education Hour. So let's talk about some of the the poor advice that people are getting around Roth conversions. There's a lot of noise about this. Well, here's what happens. We're not blaming anyone. Historically speaking, if you went to a financial advisor about taxes or any sort of tax planning, they would direct you to your CPA. And if you are in retirement or close to retirement, you went to your CPA and said, should I Roth convert? Where should I take income from? They're going to tell you to go to your financial advisor, right? So it was this little ping pong game that constantly would go on. Now, today, we're getting more people willing to give general advice. No one's really doing the planning, sincerely. Find a financial advisor really mapping out 30 years of retirement income Because here's the deal. You can't make this decision on how much, when, or if you should be Roth converting without knowing what your tax bill is going to be for the next 30 years. Someone's got to project this, map this out, and then run a bunch of iterations, hundreds of iterations. We can tell you in our private practice, it takes us 50, 60 hours to build a plan. So someone's got to run all these iterations to determine where the sweet spot is. And so the general advice people are getting is really short-term advice. They're really looking at the picture today or over the next three years, if you're lucky, and saying, or maybe five years and saying, okay, here's what you got. And given where your tax bracket is, maybe you should be Roth converting. Taxes are going up in the future, right? Tax are on sale. So let's Roth convert. Let's just fill up that 22% bracket or let's just fill up that 24% bracket or, or even Worse advice is let's Roth convert it all. Let's get it all done. You're still working so what? Let's Roth convert it all so you have no taxable income in retirement, which is another huge mistake, Michael, because we can take IRA money without paying any income tax on it. People don't get that. That's where we usually grab people's attention when we show people taking money out of their 401ks and IRAs and never paying taxes on it. That is in terms of the short-term advice, people hear, you know, let's just Roth convert the whole thing. Get it all out of the way. Roth converting is complicated. 
And yeah, you'll, you'll pay some taxes up front with some pretty ugly tax bills, but then just think about it. You'll have no taxes in retirement. And people think, boy, no taxes in retirement, sign me up, and I'll deal with a couple ugly early tax years to, to get that long-term goal. But what they don't realize is they're paying way more in taxes early on than they would have to for the rest of their lifetime, but they're happy because now they have zero taxes. They're happy because they don't know they don't know they just made a huge mistake. Right, right. So, so you spend... Hundreds of thousands of dollars of paying tax to Roth convert. And if you actually did things properly and mapped it out and you realized, wait a second, if I didn't, if I had Roth converted half, I would have paid half the total income taxes over the next 30 years, right? The math isn't what's happening this year or next year or the next three years or five years. The math is what's going to happen over the next 30 years to determine what I should be doing now to minimize my taxes for the rest of my life. And that's what one someone goes to a CPA saying, hey, should I Roth convert this year? What should I do? They say, well, if you Roth convert 50,000 bucks, then you'll owe an extra $14,000 in taxes. Okay, great. Should I do that? Well, without knowing your future effective tax rates, was that without knowing when you're starting Social Security, how much you'll be getting for Social Security, your provisional income, that's a tax planning question, not a, not a cash flow question. Without knowing all those things, it's impossible to say, should you Roth convert this much? And should it be 50000 or 20000 or or 100000 And it's not an accident, Michael, we're doing this show right now because all I'm hearing, I'm hearing other people on the radio show, you know, come the next 10 callers, next 20 callers gets a free roadmap to retirement or even better, we'll do a free tax analysis to tell you what you should be doing. <sighs> So they've got some software system that's overlaying over a couple of years, and then they do some random projection out into the future, and they say, yeah, okay, let's, let's fill that bracket up. Let's fill the 24 bracket. It, that, that is not how you do it. That is fine for the person that's the average baby boomer who's going to retire with a couple hundred thousand or even 500,000 or 700,000. Maybe these simplified solutions are fine. But those of you who have 1 to 20 million, you deserve – You've earned, forget deserve, you've earned the right to understand how to do advanced retirement planning with advanced tax planning. And there are ways to do it. If you do it right, you will save hundreds of thousands of dollars. You just don't put your finger up in the air and test the winds of how much to Roth convert. No, it is a math problem and it is a complicated, time-consuming math problem. So once you throw in things like cap, unrealized capital gains, charitable planning, planning for when one spouse passes away. That's a huge game changer that people do not think about. At one point in time, if you're currently married, the sad truth is one of you will probably pass away and the other spouse will live for, who knows, one, five, 10, 15 years as a single person. That totally changes the tax math problem. Michael, I want to make sure we come back to the surviving spouse, how that factors into whether I should be Roth converting and how much I should be Roth converting, because that is totally, people don't even know what we're talking about. So, so someone passes away, what happens? Oh, a lot happens. Oh, remember, Medicare means testing needs to be a factor also in how much I'm Roth converting when we're recognizing games. All of these decisions, you may not ever be able to construct. In fact, most of you, I'd be willing to bet none of you are going to be qualified to really build a retirement plan. I don't care how smart you are. I've got CFOs for Fortune 500 companies coming to the class. They shouldn't be building their own retirement plans for a lot of reasons. But you're going to understand the levers and you're going to understand the variables to make this decision because you don't right now. You do not know this. And that's why you have to attend an eight-hour class. And that's why they're taught at the universities. And it's advanced retirement planning courses. If you'd like to register, you can go to retirementplanningedu.org. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll have more with Kirk and Michael right after this. This is the Retirement Education Hour. We're glad you're with us here on the program today. Want to remind you, you can also find this program wherever you find your favorite podcast. That's right. You can download this episode and plenty others. Just search for the Retirement Education Hour. And don't forget, the foundation offers retirement planning courses. We've been telling you about these. They're held at major Michigan universities. They're master's level courses on retirement and retirement planning. We want you there. We want you to get a front row seat. So go to the website to get registered. Keeping in mind, spots fill up pretty quickly. Go to retirementplanning.com 
retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call 800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981. These courses are held at major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. And if you'd rather attend from home, we've got that option as well. These are streamed live. So go to the website now, find out more, and get registered at retirementplanningedu.org. On the show today, we've been talking about Roth conversions. And, you know, Kirk, Michael, I want to find out a few more reasons why you think Roth conversions are important for our listeners to be considering. So maybe a a couple checklist things. Okay, first, contributing and converting to Roth can be effective. And and, and we're really talking about these these retirees who are going to retire with over 800,000, right? I I, want to focus on those people for a minute. There's reasons when you have less, but there are chances that you may not, it may not be best for you. But I am willing to go out on a limb and say, if you've got more than $800,000 saved, you've got a lot of that in retirement accounts. And so call a million plus to 20 million. You got tons of your money in retirement accounts. And what, see, people get uh, misunderstand how to make the decision on social security, right? Because the decision on social security is really primarily a tax decision. And there is no calculators out there to give you that answer. We teach you in the class. It'll blow you away. We teach you about provisional income so you can actually do the math to determine when you should be triggering your Social Security. That's an important discussion. Now, Roth, Roth conversions play a big factor in when you should be taking Social Security. And so, Michael, I'm getting a little stuck because I don't want to go too deep, but Roth conversions also will impact in retirement for many people, whether their long-term capital gains and dividends are taxable, right? So we talk about the secret of the 12% tax bracket, the value of being in the 12% bracket. Before you guys dismiss, I'll never be dismiss the, the fact that you could ever be in a 12% bracket. We teach in the class, people living on $150,000 to $200,000 a year of income in retirement, cash flow in retirement, and they're in a 12% bracket, never paying taxes on capital gains, never paying taxes on dividends. It's a puzzle and the puzzle is complicated, but if you understand the variables, then you will know how much you should be Roth converting, if you should Roth convert and when you should be Roth converting. How about the surviving spouse, Michael? So the surviving spouse is really important. I want to come back to it, but really quickly here, I want to make sure people understand there's no silver bullet to this. And one thing that we see often in the class is people have read, you know, a couple books The Power of Zero is a really popular one, and they think that there's some silver bullet product or silver bullet strategy that can help them get into the 0% tax bracket or the 12% tax bracket. There's no silver bullet. It is just 30 years of mapping out when to Roth convert, where to Roth convert, why to Roth convert. If someone's trying to sell you something to promise you cheaper taxes in the future based on some product... It's probably not going to work out as well as you think it might go, as, as well as you might. If something existed like that, everyone would do it. Yes. If there was a silver bullet, everyone yes. would do it, but there's not. Yeah, the, the, the whole power of zero, misfortune 101, misfort, uh, bank on your they're all, it's, it's just the, all the same thing reincarnated, recreated by insurance salespeople trying to sell you life insurance. And I'm not, we're not here to just bash life insurance, but the concept of using some instrument to try to create tax free money in retirement. It may give you some tax-free retirement money. I I won't doubt that. I know that. I mean, we've been doing this for a long time and analyzed thousands of those. If that strategy was the most effective strategy, we're responsible for $2 billion and over 1,000 clients, high net worth families. We'd be using that strategy. We don't use that strategy because it's not the best strategy. There's a more effective way to pay pay less taxes than using these life insurance strategies for tax-free income. So I didn't want to throw you off too much on a tangent there, but that one piece is important. We hear that a lot. So the surviving spouse, the math that people don't typically do when they're trying to determine Roth convert or not Roth convert, that is the question, is what happens to my spouse or to me when one of us passes away? What happens to our taxes? And 
simply put, there is the, the single filing tax bracket, the joint filing tax bracket. People who are married currently, they're getting the benefits of the joint filing tax bracket. You have more allowable income, higher thresholds. More uh, standard deductions. Higher standard deductions. When one of you passes away, that all goes away. You go back to the single filing tax bracket, and you have much less allowable income in the different brackets, and Medicare is means-tested, meaning you'll be paying more Medicare taxes. Now, that's all avoidable if you do the Roth conversion planning to account for one of us passing away in the future. So, Michael, I, I, I was killing him over here because I was trying to interrupt him the whole time. So, that the, 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 here's the piece. The, the, to connect this all together, Michael, is that when one spouse dies, when one of you dies, and by the way, we can assume 86 or 80, whatever you want, but I know that we're losing tons of clients, unfortunately, in their 60s and 70s regularly in our private practice. We don't, you don't know when you're going to lose your spouse. When one spouse dies, the surviving spouse still has the same amount of required minimum distributions. They have to take their own plus the decedent, the person who died. So Roth converting can allow that surviving spouse to have less forcible RMDs, right? Which translate, translates into a smaller percentage of their Social Security being taxable, which can translate into them falling into a 12% bracket, which none of their dividends and capital gains become taxable. So And, and brings down Medicare because Medicare goes from married to single means testing. So that's the challenge here is all these things are domino effects. You miss one piece in this, you miss the whole rest of the domino chain. That's why you got to come to a class. That, that's why they're eight hours. They're taught over two evenings or full Saturday. It is a master's level comprehensive class. It moves fast. It's a tremendous amount of in, in, information. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register for one of our courses, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or check out some of our webinars or what a real retirement plan looks like webinar on the retirementplanningedu.org's website. And we'll return. There's more with Kirk and Michael right after this. We're glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak alongside Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They are both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation, and you can meet them and other financial instructors from the foundation at the foundation's courses. These are master's level courses on retirement planning, and we want you to be there. So here's how to register. You can go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or call to get registered, 800-240-8981. These are taught at major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, the Novi Antroy Campus, or Oakland University. If you'd rather attend from home, you can do that as well. These are all streamed live. So keep that in mind when you go to the website to get your seat reserved. Again, it's retirement planning edu.org. We've been having a great discussion here on the program about Roth conversions. If you should do that, when you should convert and how to do it. And if you've missed anything in this discussion, you want to go back to revisit, you're welcome to download this podcast. That's right. It's in podcast form and you can find it wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Be sure to tell a friend. Just search for Retirement Education Hour. All right, Kirk and Michael, I want to get back to this discussion. You say there are actually a few ingredients we want to keep in mind that make Roth conversions more favorable. What are those ingredients? Well, it's funny. The ingredients, and I think most people know this, the more non-retirement assets, we call them non-qualified assets or taxable assets, the more money we have saved in non-retirement accounts gives us the greatest amount to convert the most once you retire, right? So part of getting, we try to encourage and teach people in the class is how can I retire earlier so that I have a longer runway between the date I retire and when I am forced to start taking required minimum distributions. That runway, the longer the runway, the less I need to Roth convert on an annual basis. I can spread out the tax burden. If I spread it out properly, 
I'm going to pay significantly less taxes over my lifetime by doing it that way. That is the most effective way, the proper way to do Roth conversions, being able to spread it out over time. And to do that, I have to, once I retire, have non-IRA dollars. I have to have money saved that I can use to live on, to spend for income as I'm converting. And that's why sometimes we might even turn Social Security on earlier right? Because I can, especially if I'm not paying any income taxes on my social security, but it's giving me cash flow to live on, that allows me more room to Roth convert in a lower effective tax rate. I know that may sound confusing, but it's a math problem. It's a 30-year math problem. And in the class, we give you all the ingredients and the levers that you're going to need to look at and pull to be able to find the most effective time, amount, If you should, if you're doing Roth, most people are doing this wrong. They're guesstimating and guesstimating isn't the way to do this. You can map this out. So it's a real math problem and you know exactly when to do it. Michael, I want you to hit on this and I think this is where you want to go. We are hearing people regularly. I'm aggressively paying down my homes going into retirement because I don't want a mortgage when I go into retirement. That is killing us, Michael. They are paying down 3% mortgages and they think... They they don't understand the math. That's killing their ability to Roth convert. So uh, we know one of the big rules of thumb is pay your house off before you retire. That and was a rule of thumb when interest rates are at six seven percent, not at two or three percent. But set that aside. Well, the rule ki- rule of thumb came about from the seventies and eighties when interest rates were fifteen percent for mortgage. And if, Fair. if mortgage rates were fifteen percent, then by all means pay the mortgage off. But people they refinance during 2020, 2021. Their mortgage rates are between two and a half and three and a half percent, and they're spending all their extra after tax dollars paying that mortgage off because they were told pay the mortgage off before you retire. Then they go to retire and- All they have is pre-tax money. They did a great job saving. They have their one, two, three, four, whatever, $10 million saved, but it's all pre-tax traditional IRAs, traditional 401ks, and they spent all their after-tax money paying the house off. And so we told those people, look, you did a great job saving. That's fantastic. But since you spent all the non-qualified, non-IRA money on paying the house off, you have nothing left over to help you Roth convert. And now you have a tax bomb brewing, and it's really difficult, if not impossible, to unwind that tax bomb without after-tax non-IRA dollars. Now, Michael, I'm going to interrupt because it's it's interesting. People don't even recognize the bot tax bomb they have. If someone took your take your IRAs and your 401ks and project forward what the value of those accounts are going to be when you're 75 years old, then take just using round numbers we teach in the class, but let's say take four or five percent withdrawal rates. That's what you're going to have to take out. So if you have $2 million in retirement accounts when you're 75 years old, <laughs> you're going to have to take out one hundred and sixty dollars to $200,000 just in taxable income plus Social Security. You're blowing yourself up in high, high tax rates that were avoidable if, see, you guys are thinking, we know what you're thinking when you're paying off your house. I don't want a mortgage. Well, don't worry about a mortgage. You guys are all underspending what you otherwise could be spending in retirement because you're not... You could take larger withdrawals if you someone teach, taught you how to build a plan. But two is you think this is the arbitrage between your growth rate in the market versus paying off your house. That is not what we're talking about. We're not telling you not to pay off your 3% mortgage because you can get better returns in the market. That is even the argument, even though that's likely true. Forget that argument. It's the amount of tax savings you're going to save over your lifetime will be a heck of a lot more than what you're paying in mortgage interest if you keep those dollars liquid so you can Roth convert and minimize your taxes for the rest of your life because they're all intertwined. The taxable portion of Social Security, your capital gains, your dividends, your RMDs, they're all intertwined. And if you map it out, you save hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes. That's a huge piece because people assume, well, the math they're doing is the return on the money versus the interest cost. That's not the math. The math is the tax savings of using those dollars for Roth conversions versus the interest costs. And when anyone's mortgage is between 25 and 4%, we've run the numbers hundreds of times, it's a slam dunk. Those dollars are more powerful used in Roth conversions. But 
with mortgages especially, there's a math side and emotion side. And the emotions for a lot of people win out. I don't care how logical someone thinks they are. The emotions win out unless there's a plan built to prove it to them. No, this is the better use for the for the dollars. Well, Raw Michael, that, that, that's the point. If you're forced to take all that income in your 70s because of RMDs, is the mortgage really a problem? They're going to make you take it. You got to take the income. You got you got the money for the mortgage. Don't worry about the mortgage. Right? It's illogical. Attend an eight-hour class. We'll teach you all of this. To attend one of our eight-hour courses at all the major universities here in Michigan, you have to make a $29 donation to charity. Register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be right back with Kirk and Michael. Stay tuned. We're glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak alongside Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin, both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Have you registered yet for the foundation's courses, these master's level courses on retirement planning? If not, I want to send you to the website to reserve a spot. Retirementplanningedu.org. You'll want to go Find a date and location that works for you and get registered. If you're thinking about retirement, if you've circled a date on the calendar this year to step away from the workforce, you've got to attend this course. So here's where they're taught so you can make plans. The University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, the Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. And you have the choice to attend over the over two days or just a one-day course. Be sure to visit that website to get more information and to get registered, retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call 800-240-8981. We've been talking about Roth conversions here on the show. If you should convert, when to convert, or even how to convert. If you want to go back and re-listen or share this episode with a friend, remember these programs are also podcasts and you can find them wherever you find your favorite podcast. Just search for Retirement Education Hour. So Kirk and Michael, I want to get back to this topic at hand and also just mention this is really just one piece of the planning puzzle, isn't it? It is, Megan. And like we normally do in this last segment, we, we're going to talk about what a real comprehensive retirement plan should look like and what's being taught in the class. But before we do that, I want to recap just one thing about the last segment, because I know we rushed through a very important topic that probably piqued a lot of people's interest. That's around whether I should pay my house off or not, right? And how, how, what does that have to do with Roth conversions? Now, look, please understand, we're talking about that $1 million to $20 million household family who are, you know, these are executives, they're CFOs, CEOs, CPAs, attorneys, engineers, do-it-yourselfers. That's who's attending our courses. Those are the people that are using this outdated misconception about, I need to pay my house off before I retire. Okay. So if you want to understand why paying off your low interest rate mortgage, two and a half to three and a half, two and a half to four percent mortgage, why paying it off is a mistake or maybe a mistake towards Roth conversions, you need to attend the class. You just, we will explain the math so you better understand this. Just to clarify, paying off faster than you have to. Yeah, paying it, I'm sorry, paying it off faster like many of you are doing. Those dollars are so valuable early in retirement. You need those dollars. So it comes down to planning, Michael, as always, right? One thing I would tell people to do is they should go to the website. And if they go to our website, we have a webinar. I think it's a 30-minute webinar walking in through what a real retirement plan looks like. What takes us 50 to 60 hours to build and why it takes us eight hours to teach our class. You'll see what we're teaching in that class. You'll see what a sample plan looks like. In that sample plan, it's a $2 million person retiring. We're doing Roth conversions. We're creating 160, 180, $200,000 a year of cash flow. They're going to be in a 12% bracket their entire life, meaning they'll never pay taxes on capital gains. They're never going to pay taxes on dividends. Only a small percentage of their Social Security is taxable. They're going to save five to $600,000 in taxes over their lifetime because they mapped out the most effective times, ways to Roth convert and take income from the right accounts. It was a 30-year plan. Go to retirementplanningedu.org 
and watch that webinar, Michael. And that's under the webinars tab. And, you know, that particular sample plan took us somewhere in the range, I think, of actually 70 or 75 hours because there was a charitable component to that as well. And we didn't even get to talk today about how charitable planning, when done properly, can really give Roth conversions a ton more horsepower. That's a great point. If you're giving to charity and getting no tax benefits for it, and I know giving to charity is not for the tax benefits, but if we are going to be charitable, let's do it properly. That can help us Roth convert even more, making our taxes even lower in the future. It's all got to be mapped out. If people are just giving to charity nilly, willy-nilly and not mapping this out, finding the sweet spots and the efficiencies, they're paying more in taxes than they have to. Michael, a plan is going to tell us when do I take income, from which accounts, at which age, depending on market performance, if the market's up, I should be taking it from these accounts. If the market's down, I should be taking it from these accounts. And then I should be withdrawing from these accounts to minimize taxes. I should be Roth converting at these times to this dollar amount because I know over 30 years, I know if I do it this way, I'm saving three, $400,000 of income taxes. If I map this out properly, if I would have just Roth convert them all. So you don't have to Roth convert at all because we can bring IRA money and 401k money and RMDs into an income stream and not pay any income tax on it. There are thresholds. You get standard deductions. You get elderly deductions. There are pockets. If you're giving charitable, it's it's a map, 30-year map with all the levers of what to do, when to do, and how to behave during different market events. And the second piece to that is, so we talked today about if when and how to Roth convert. We haven't talked at all about once you do Roth convert, when do you spend the Roth money? Yes. How do you spend the Roth money? So there's the five-year rule. You can't spend the Roth money for five years. But then once that five-year rule is up, when to spend it, how fast to spend it, should I be saving it for a surviving spouse or not? All these things, it depends on the plan. There is no one-size-fits-all rule. And you one to 10 million or even one to $20 million household families do not have a resource to go to. This is, we're talking about family office type of advanced planning. It's those $25 million and plus families who have teams of CPAs, wealth managers, attorneys, advisors working together to coordinate the plan. We're going to teach that in the class. There is no resources for you. It doesn't exist out there. There's no advantage for the financial service industry to map this out for you and teach you how to spend more money and pay less taxes because it takes them more time and they make less money if you spend more money. So attend one of the eight-hour classes at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Michigan State University, Oakland, and Novi campuses. Uh, we're also streaming it live. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register for a class or just check out some of the webinars, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Retirement Education Foundation is a fiscally sponsored program of United Charitable a registered 501c3 public charity. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual's situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is paid for by the Retirement Education Foundation.